breakfast this morning well for most of you it's probably lunch but I slept in like crazy today I've been extremely exhausted um, so I'll get into that but I've got eggs egg whites um, yeah jam and toast with some ghee butter on there so that's what I'm eating right now seven weeks out today so I've got my fitness pal here, um, what I use to log all my food. If you guys aren't familiar with my fitness pal, then um, it's really great, especially for tracking macros. Um, and like I mentioned before, when I first started doing this, tracking macros anyway, I really struggled because um, I never tracked anything before um, but most of the stuff I eat is already in here so I just look it up and then add it so I had my toast jam ghee uh, egg egg whites and um, yeah that's pretty much it for right now so okay so finally getting to my workout today um, I had um, somebody come out for the AC repair today so it hasn't really been working and we found out there was a leak in our AC unit and the Freon was almost gone so I had somebody come out and fix that this morning uh, it's been pretty hot in the house I mean I'm okay with it because usually I'm freezing anyway but a few weeks back it was 117 118 at our house it's not that hot right now thank goodness we've actually had thunderstorms over here almost every day this week but that couple weeks it was really really hot the temperature in the house wouldn't get below the 80s um, so really glad that we got that fixed so I'm gonna be heading to the gym for my workout I'm gonna see if I can <laughs> get some recording done hopefully there's nobody there usually Friday nights at the gym or Friday evenings are pretty empty because most people go out I think um, hey shh. That's my dog so uh, if you've seen my post before we got a pet turtle that well we found him I found him uh, in my driveway and then I pulled him into the garage and he decided to follow me in there so um, then I, now we just live in the backyard. <laughs> so my dog likes to, to look for him if he sees him outside. He usually doesn't come outside during the day, um, usually in the afternoon. So I'm gonna head to the gym. I've got my Cellubol, and I still need to use my VasoBurn that I'm gonna put on. Um, and then I've got, I need to take the cortisol supplement today because I haven't yet. Um, but you can take that anytime. It doesn't have to be before you work out. Or you don't even have to be on prep to use that. I just started using it for prep because of how helpful it is. And I don't know if I could just buy it all the time. I mean, who knows? So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's get this in here. I really shake my supplements before I use them um, whether you have to or not I don't know but I know sometimes product can settle if it's been sitting so I always shake mine up a little bit before um, I scoop it into my shaker cup so that's my soluble and that's pretty much it oh and then I have the uh, the farm grade as well. So I'm gonna be putting that in here after I'm done drinking this and then we're gonna to go to the gym. And I've got my water, messy kitchen. <laughs> so I've got my water here. Uh, this is just Mio. I need to replace the fridge filter, the, the fridge water filter because, well, it needs to be replaced. And honestly, the water here in Tucson is absolutely horrible to me. <laughs> 
So, I mean, if I go out and I buy a brand new gallon at a gas station or Walmart or, you know, wherever I can, I went through almost one of these in my workout yesterday. Um, but I can pretty easily down water. I'm trying to get up to two gallons right now. I'm about one and a quarter, one and a half. So this really helps me to get my water down. And it's just been really helpful for me. I like the orange one the best. I've got, this is the one I like to use. Can you see that? There we go, the orange tangerine. So I like this one. Usually it'll last me about a week or so. So my kitchen's kind of a mess. Uh, my stepkids were here last week and I just been really exhausted. So, uh, Sally Ball, I'm gonna drink this down, get my farm grade in, um, and then we're gonna head to the gym. And then after that, um, I'll just kind of talk about some of the stuff that's been going on, what I'm doing, um, and just kind of give you guys an update. I know I was gone for several weeks. Um, yeah, so huge props to all you full-time moms out there who do this. Um, so yeah. So yeah, to the gym we go. Okay, so I've got all my stuff. Um, hang on a second, let me put you down. I've got all my stuff ready. I'm just gonna head to the gym. My back's been really bothering me lately. Um, and if you've ever, uh, well, it was a long time ago, I posted, about how my back was crooked and I'd gone to see a chiropractor and he told me that I had scoliosis and I'd have to have treatment for the rest of my life. Um, well, and then I had gone to see a couple of OMT doctors and, you know, they would adjust me and they're like, well, you know, if you really had scoliosis, you wouldn't be able to put this particular, um, you know, part of your body back in place. It just doesn't stay there. So um, I think where I'm at now is well what i know is going on partly is the left side of my spine in particular is so tight that it feels like ropes so i feel like all those muscle knots and fascia adhesions and um all that sort of thing it's pulling my spine out of place um and so my back has been really sore especially in those really tight areas and I've been rolling out with, um, I do have a foam roller that I'll kind of use, but honestly, it doesn't really feel like anything ever since I've been using my fascia blaster, um, and all that stuff, uh, foam rollers don't really feel like anything. So I do use the fascia blaster and I will show you guys today how I use that. And if you've seen my posts on Instagram, you've seen how I bruise like really crazy on my legs. Um, I have a lot, a lot, a lot of, um, uh, what do you call it? Fascia adhesions and muscle knots in my legs. And I mean, this isn't, I'm, I'm sure some of it is from weight training and, and all that stuff and just working out really hard every day. Um, but a lot of it I found out, especially in my lower legs where I'd mentioned before that I had a lot of problems for a really long time. One from food allergies, which I no longer have. That's a whole nother story in itself. But, um, aside from the inflammation that I, that I would always get, um, I have a lot of knots in my lower legs from doing dance, um, for 12 years, you know, and never really addressing that issue down there so you know could, could you imagine <laughs> doing bodybuilding or weight training or just working out for so hard for so long and never getting any maintenance treatment on that area so that's pretty much where i'm at um and like i said i i've been using the fascia blaster and i've had it since last year last fall um but I am just now getting to the point where I can use it on my lower legs and it's not as painful because before it was so painful, I could, it, it was really hard to do myself. So um, having said that, there's also a really good, I 
think he's a chiropractor up in Phoenix that was recommended to me that does Graston and he's really really great he's worked on a lot of IFBB pros and a lot of people with pro physiques and so I'd feel comfortable going there I haven't gone there yet um, but I'm thinking hopefully I can try to make it up there and see what they can do for me but in the meantime I've been rolling out with uh, well sort of the foam roller just along my back but I'm using these they're like a firm five inch ball that you roll out with and then I have a really small one that I use in my lower legs and oh my gosh it has made such a huge difference so um that's what I've been using every day and then just really trying to stretch oh and then <laughs> also for my back I did use the the roll ball on my back um so that really helped a lot but what I also did is I have those the cupping you guys are familiar with cupping I've got two different sets um, one of them is just like silicone cups you can push and then you know manually adjust the air suction and then I also have another set that actually has a vacuum um, cord I guess you know that you can you can pull and it sucks out air I haven't used those yet um, but I did use a couple of the silicone cups on my back last night and it feels better. I mean, it's still really sore, but I feel like it was doing something. And like I said, for the first time yesterday, using the ball um, earlier this week, I couldn't even roll. I couldn't even use it on my glutes. It hurt so bad. And last night was the first time that I could actually use the ball and, and sit on it and roll through my glutes. And I could actually feel everything just release. And it was like, oh, finally. So... <laughs> Um, so yeah, I will show you guys how I use the fascia blaster and all that stuff um, when I get back from the gym. So today I have my shoulder workout and I also have, you know, cardio, of course. Um, but I just wanted to go through some of my workouts and show you what I do. I'm sure a lot of you have seen a lot of it. Ah, it's raining! Yeah, we're gonna get another big storm. <laughs> Which is nice. Um, so I wanted to tell you guys, I know I had posted about a suit I was making a while back. And I'm still going to finish it, but I decided that with I, I do have a lot of stuff going on. And I decided that I'm going to, well, that I'm going to buy a suit instead. So I have one picked out. And... It should be, I should have it within the next few weeks, so I'll share that with you guys. Um, I decided to go with the Tammy Marie suits. Um, you can find her on Instagram at, at Marie Suits. So I've been following her for a really long time and um, probably some of the most gorgeous suits I have ever seen. So I've got one picked out and I'm really excited to get it. Um, still a dark, I'm going with a dark color. Um, so I'm really excited about that. And I'll, like I said, I'll still finish the other suit that I had started making. I was having some issues with the cut on the bottom. It was too bunchy and of course I've lost weight since I started that suit and it fits different so I just instead of messing with it I just decided that I'm gonna wait and finish it later at another time okay so I just got to the gym and it is pouring like crazy uh, well, I don't know if you can tell, but I thought I would just kind of take a second <laughs> and take the time to talk to you guys in the car just so the rain can settle down just a bit. I mean, I'm right next to the door, so it's not like a big deal if I get wet. I don't really care, but hey, why not? So, um, yeah, so I had my stepkids with me for two weeks. Um, and then that first week I picked him up, my husband was also in town, so I drove to, let's see if I can move this here, ah. okay, 
So I drove to Vegas and picked up my stepkids and drove back and then the next morning we picked up my husband from the airport and he was here for three days so that was really great to have him home. I'm sad to see him leave. We had to wake up at like five or something to take him back to the airport so um but i did have the kids for two weeks and that was really fun um the hardest part obviously would be going from no kids to three kids full time um but it was a lot of fun we did a lot of fun things getting into a routine with them was a little bit difficult although it was easier than it has been in the past uh, I, I made sure a couple weeks ahead that I had meals planned for stuff that I would make. I had it on a calendar and everything, so that was pretty simple. Um, and then, honestly, it was, it was kind of difficult for me to stay on task because, honestly, I'd get up and make them breakfast, and then by the time I got done making them breakfast, I didn't feel like making more food. So I'm like, great, now I gotta do my food and all that stuff, so. But it wasn't that big of a deal, you know, still got things done. Um, even more so, just this past week alone, for me anyway, and it's kind of the same thing when my, when my husband's here and then he goes and he leaves on a trip, I've just been so exhausted. Um, I just can't seem to focus on anything or get anything done and I just really struggle to do simple things. <laughs> um, and I'm back at work, so that's been nice. Um, but I just have really felt this week that I've been dragging through the week and it's just been really difficult to get back on the schedule that I had before the kids were here. So just trying to get back on that. There was a point when the kids were here that my my weight spiked up like 10 pounds. It was insane. I thought it was something that I ate, but I had eaten a little bit of the same thing a week later and nothing happened. So that was just insane. My whole body swelled up and I, yeah. <laughs> ended up taking something to push whatever it was I ate out of my system the next morning I was five pounds lighter so I like shot up ten in the morning I was five less and then a few days later I was back down to 133 but I don't know what it was so um, just really trying to keep my eating clean um, I haven't started cutting yet so we're seven weeks out this is I don't know. <laughs> I haven't started cutting anything yet and my weight's been staying down at 133 so I've been really happy with that. My stage weight in the past has been 122 so I feel like I'm doing pretty well um, as far as that's concerned. I'm not, I don't really care too much about weight but I do like to see, I do like to gauge how, you know, it's a tool. The, the scale is a tool, food is a tool, working out is a tool, and you know, when you're prepping for a competition, you know, it's not about weight loss. Bodybuilding isn't about weight loss. Um, I had a friend on Facebook post a really awesome um, post about, you know, how bodybuilding isn't about losing weight and you know, it's not about achieving a weight loss goal and then getting on stage in front of people. That's not what it's about. So I do use the scale as a tool, but I don't really obsess over numbers. With bodybuilding, you have to be okay. Um, obviously losing weight for a show, you know, most people are like, oh yeah, I lose weight. But you know, you have to be okay with gaining weight also. So the scale is a tool and the it can't be an obsession uh, and worrying about eating food can't be a thing you know if you've got issues with eating food it's probably not the best sport for you um, to be honest so and I'm not saying you can't work through that or, or anything or have a healthy relationship with food and I know there's a lot of people out there who have really struggled with eating disorders and competing or sometimes competing can bring out an eating disorder in some people you know just worrying about 
so many things and um, I don't really have a lot of experience with that. I mean, sure, I've, I've struggled with weight and, and issues and all that stuff, but a lot of that was long before I even started competing. And I would say it took me, I don't know, 15 years of trying to do my own food research. And I started doing that long before I, I was ever competing. And so for me, when I got into competing, the eating clean and doing five, six meals a day and following something consistent was fairly easy for me because I had already been doing that. Um, so just some kind of insight there. Um, yeah, so my weight has been around 133, seven weeks out. Um, I haven't started cutting yet. I'm sending my check-in photos to my coach today, so I don't know what he's gonna say or you know if we're gonna keep things the same or not. Uh, I will find out and I'll let you know. Man, it is really coming down. Okay, so pouring or not, I think it's time to go in. Uh, I had a list of stuff that I wanted to talk to you guys about at home. Obviously, I left it at home. It's in my planner, so. I'm gonna run inside and we're gonna get started on the workout. We'll just go over some more stuff later.
finished my shoulder workout. Um, it goes by pretty fast and there's nobody at the gym today, which was great because I could actually record a little bit more without feeling too awkward, but it was pretty empty today. Um, so that's my shoulder workout for today. Um, I'm going to do some hit cardio next on the bike. So and I can't really record because I need the timer on my phone. So uh, I'm going to do some hit cardio and then maybe practice some posing and then I'm going to head home. So I'll catch up with you guys after that. So I'm back at the house, uh, my post-workout meal that I just happen to be eating is eggs. I've got two eggs, egg whites and brown rice. So I'm going to eat that. Um, I'm going to eat real quick and then when I'm done, I'll talk about some more stuff. Um, so yeah. Okay. So back at the house, I know I was going to talk to you guys about the fascia blaster and how I use that. I had actually made a video um, last February that I was trying to post. If you had watched my previous videos, I talked about um, the video that I had made that I didn't get to post because I had trouble uploading. So I found that video and I'm going to cut out that section and I'm going to put it in this one. Um, and then I explain how I use my fascia blaster and that sort of thing. So I'll go ahead and put that clip in for you guys. You're going to want to use an oil that doesn't readily absorb into the skin so much. Um, like, you know how you put lotion on and it kind of goes right into your skin. Uh, I was using an almond oil, baby oil, I've heard it's really good. If you go on the website, they also have an oil you can buy. But basically you want an oil that's going to kind of stay on the top of your skin so it allows this to glide very smoothly because what you don't want is dry skin. And you want your legs heated up, so a great way to use this is in the sauna, in the shower, like soak in the tub for, you know, a little, I don't know, like 10, 15 minutes, you know, and then start doing it because you're going to put the oil on your skin here, like say you're doing this, and you're going to start like scrubbing. And you can go up and down, you can go side to side, you can go diagonal, the only thing you don't do is go in a circle. Um, and you're going to do it kind of at a fast pace and you're going to start to notice the skin's going to get red. Um, if you've been in the shower, the tub, or the, or the sauna, your skin might already be a little bit flush. Um, but you're going to start doing that and once your skin starts heating up in that area, that's when you can really start digging in and that's what these little claws are for. So those are going to dig in and the deeper you dig, that's when those knots are going to surface and you will literally feel them. So like when I did my arms last night, super smooth, could do it really fast. When I do my legs, you can actually feel the bumps and the knots um, that need to be worked out. And that's where the bruising comes from, is once those knots have been um, worked out and the fascia can release, that's when the bruising shows up and that's that area actually beginning to heal. So the bruising is good. It lets you know that that area is in recovery. Um, so yeah, I really love this thing. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the fascia blaster tutorial. Um, I like to use that at least once or twice a week and until the bruising heals, which usually takes, depending on how bad the area is, about three to five days. Um, so if you want to learn more, Ashley Black Guru is on Instagram, uh, fashionblaster.com, and I actually first discovered this tool from YouTube, and I know she has a bunch of tutorial videos out there on how to use it, and they were really helpful, so it was definitely one of the most beneficial tools I have ever spent money on, so I would definitely recommend getting it. Um, that's kind of all for today, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video and gonna stay on track and get you guys a new video next week and I'll let you know what's going on. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in a week. Bye.